What's going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and I guess at this point, I'm the big dog as far as the big dog podcast goes. Jonathan, what do you think? Yeah, I feel like they know what's going on. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to claim it. Rough, rough. <laughs> Look, poor Jonathan. He's got me here in the studio this morning. We were scheduled to, to go at 10. It is 10, 12. I was in here at, I believe, 10, 09, so running a little late, and I'm in a sweaty T-shirt and funky socks, and I'm sorry if it gets a little ripe in here. I try to keep the air circulating because I run hot anyway, so usually I keep it cool and, and want this thing circulating, but the way the schedule plays today, uh, the shower's got to get fit in at some point. Yeah, and we got to get the podcast done. We so. got to get the podcast done. Here's the thing that's messed up. So you work out, right? And, you know, you're burning some calories, throwing some weights, maybe you're doing some cardio or something, and you sweat. Then I go and take a shower, and I feel like I'm still sweating for three to four days. It's because you got to take cold showers. Man, I got that sucker cold. I put it on cold, and I run it on my wrist like you're supposed to cool your body or something by doing that. So I'm running the hose from the shower on my wrist to try to trick myself in like cooling my body. And I guess by doing that, it's kind of like the heated floors and like super bougie people's bathrooms. They have like water lines running. Do you know about this? Yeah. Underneath the top hydrothermal or whatever. I've been to the MGM Graham oh, brand sh- one time. Look, you know, you know the deal. I don't have that type of stuff in my house. I mean, we just got some tile. You know what I mean? We don't have anything flowing like that, that your feet are warm. Devin would love that, though. I feel like everybody would love that. It's like one of those things like heated seats or like air-conditioned <laughs> seats that you just don't think that you need, and then when you get them, you're like, oh, wow. All right, so you mentioned MGM Grand real quick before I jump in, and then you talked about heated seats. Let me remind you of something. Uh, or not remind you of something, but tell you a really funny story that came, comes to mind. So in December, um, Devin and I went to Vegas for like four or five days, and this was a trip that was supposed to take place last summer, But um, some stuff with the kids came up and just we had to blow up our entire vacation plan, which is no big deal. And um, we changed it. And Devin and I ended up having like the most fantastic trip ever. That was just super spur of the moment. It's just her and I. It was amazing. But part of the original trip was supposed to be in Vegas for a couple days. And some of my Apex family gave me some um, connects. So we had this dope suite at the Aria, um, like, Man, this thing was sick. Like, it was just incredible. Well, we had to reschedule that trip. It got rescheduled to December. And, you know, it was a two-bedroom deal. I was like, man, you know what? Katie's really busted her ass this year. Worked really, really hard. Devin, what do you think about inviting Katie and Evan to join us for these couple days out in Vegas? And when you travel with me, it... I want people to feel free to do their own thing. I'm not going to have a bunch of crap planned out and all that stuff unless we're going to Napa. If we're going to Napa... I'm going to have the wineries lined up. I'm going to have restaurants picked. Um, nobody's got to go do that stuff, but that's what I'm going to go do. And if you want to really, really have a great time and a great experience, you're going to follow suit because I'm not going to go to any bad places while we're out there. So, But Vegas is Vegas. And so go do what you want. You know, you're know, you going to have a cool place to stay if you want to join us, whatever. And Katie immediately, yep, when? Tomorrow? What do I need to pack? I mean, she's ready to roll. So you know, they joined us out in Vegas. So we get to Vegas. We get checked into the um, hotel. Man, it it was super great experience. Beautiful. Views are incredible. Had like a dining room, a little kitchenette, a living room, different stuff. (laughs) And I walk in the bathroom. I was like, man, this beautiful like tub in the middle, big, huge walk-in shower, dual vanities on each side, TV, all this stuff. And then there's like the little room where the toilet's at. I was like, man, that is a very high tech looking toilet. You know, I feel like toilets from a purpose standpoint can get by with being as low tech as possible. I still use gas station bathrooms. Oh Jesus. This is Uh, where I'm at listening to this story. We're going to have another conversation (laughs) about that could be an episode all in itself. So anyway, I'm like, this is a very high tech toilet. And so I'm using the restroom. Like what? There's some buttons. So I walk out. I'm like, y'all see all these buttons in your in your bathroom? Is it hooked up like that? They're like, yeah, I'm not pushing any of those things. So later in the day, I need to use the facilities. I'm in the restroom in there for a little bit. And they're much longer than needed because I decide I'm going to hit all the buttons 
on this toilet. As one does. <laughs> I need to find out what, uh, <laughs> what, what these buttons do. Well, the messed up thing was the toilet seat was heated. All right. And I'm sorry that that was not Devin seemed to like it. All right. She thought it was nice. I, I was kind of grossed out by the hot toilet seat personally, but then there's multiple bidet functions. It's got a, a, a front cleanser and a rear cleanser. I don't know which buttons are what, so I'm just hitting buttons. And let me tell you, to be frank, I felt assaulted. Yeah. I Bro, some things don't need to be high tech. And that damn toilet's one of them. A toilet should just be low tech. Low tech. High tech ass toilet assaulted me at the Aria in Vegas. Sounds like, and I'm putting it out there. I told my therapist. You ever been? You ever been on that ride, Vanish Point, at Water Country USA, where they drop the floor out from underneath you? Nah, bro. Yeah, that's exactly what that feels like. I don't. I don't do water parks and theme parks and stuff. Too many people. Too many people for me. Too many people. Well, and too many people pissing in the pool. Let's be honest. Well, that's the thing is it's a communal sense of like, <laughs> no. we're all doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that way. I don't want to live that way. I don't want to deal with that. So anyway, your um, reference to the heated seats reminded me of that toilet. So sorry, we I got way off base. So let me tell you guys a um, quick message that I have for you today. It, before I jump into that, though, I'm all I'm just coming for the gym. So my brain's like I'm on one. Jonathan and I are working on something fun for y'all. And this will probably launch in April, we're talking about. But we are going to start doing live stream shows on Tuesdays. Yep. We haven't locked in the time yet, but I, I imagine it's probably going to be around noon on Tuesdays. We'll be live streaming the podcast. And it'll be on Facebook. It'll be on LinkedIn. It'll be on YouTube. Um, and then Thursday mornings, just as you guys are accustomed to, it'll drop on all your favorite platforms, you know, for an audio experience, but we'll have the video experience coming live on Tuesdays, um, live and uncensored, right? Like uh, you can't, you can't fix me when we're live, Jonathan. Yeah. But I'm not going to be like ripping your shirt off like Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake <laughs> at the Super Bowl. we we'll, we don't need the five <laughs> yeah. seconds of gap time. Right. We're good. Yeah, we don't. I'm going to work on my potty mouth so that we're good with all the platforms. Nobody's upset with me. and But it's really fun. I think it's going to be a really cool ad. Um, shout out to Facebook, um, our community on Facebook. We were looking at the metrics uh, yesterday you yep. know, in our kind of production meeting, programming meeting. And so 30% of our listeners listen through Apple Podcast. 28%, I believe, was the number listen through Facebook. And when I say listen through Facebook... It's not that, you know, they're clicking the link I drop in the comments when we post this, uh, post the show each week. They're actually listening, using um, uh, Facebook as the player, right? As the platform to listen through. Is that what, am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. So, which is pretty cool. And we have the podcast synced to um, all of our business pages. I need to find out if I can do it to my personal page. I don't know. But anyway, um, thank you to our listeners and viewers on Facebook. And so since that's such a large number um, of our followers, we are actually going to, we thought going live would be a cool thing to do, you know, for them. So starting in April, we don't have the exact date yet. Mike, I'm guessing probably mid April. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll be live streaming on Tuesdays and then audio experience on Thursday morning. So I'm excited about that. It's gonna be a lot of fun and some st stuff that we're adding in. It's going to make it easier for, um, you know, guests who are not able to be local in studio. So it's going to be great. Lots of fun things coming to you guys here in the next couple months. Great lineup of speakers. Just going to be a really, really cool time. Yeah, so. we're going to get a lot of the Apex team in here. Oh, yeah. Apex and and beyond. Yeah. And beyond. Got to find a way to get Nick White back. Well, we got to do part two. Yeah. We got to do part two. So, I mean, he was sneaking around. He ended up, he was in Northern Virginia this week for a couple of days. He went back to Florida today. Um, and... We got, we got to figure that out. So I'd love to get him on site just because it's always fun when the team can connect with him and hang out. But he would also be great, you know, remote. So we'll make it easy. We'll get Nick back on for part two and a lot of other folks coming on. So anyway, it's good stuff. What I want to talk to you about today, though, is um, the concept around if you just refuse to quit, 
It's going to be awfully hard to stop you. If you refuse to quit, it's going to be awfully hard to stop you. Josh, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about everything. Everything. Think about it. Think about how many times in your life you've been unsatisfied with where you're at. You've been disappointed in an outcome that you would say you're disappointed in an outcome that you didn't receive. I would push back and say you're disappointed in the outcome come that you did receive, you know, and probably most of the times we're disappointed in outcomes or or where we're at or what we accomplished or what we received. Um, If we really think about it and dial in, we can track it back to the moment where we quit, where we gave up on it. Jonathan, when I think about this statement, I've been thinking about the journey you've been on with your music for the last several years. I was hoping you weren't going to say gambling because I was like, this is the exact <laughs> mentality I go into gambling with. <laughs> no, it's got to do with you, but it's not the gambling piece, but it, it applies. Um, just don't quit, Jonathan. Just keep roll. Just keep betting. Keep playing red, baby. It's You'll like okay. in, it's like investing. If you oh, don't, Lord. if you don't stop, you don't pull out your investment, then you never lose. Uh, to all our listeners, gambling is not the same as investing. It. To some. It, <laughs> it, it is it is not it is not but yeah i mean you know well well i've lost so much money on the stock did you sell it no well you haven't lost shit exactly you haven't lost anything i've got plenty in the portfolio that looked that way they're like oh man i'm down so much i'm like man you ain't down you ain't down until you sell as i watch it I'm like well here we are but i was thinking about it with your music and I was like, man, you're working on some cool stuff right now, having cool conversations with interesting people that are, are kind of potentially putting you in positions to, to level up what you're doing. And I know for a fact there have been multiple times over the last several years where you've just been like, what the hell am I doing this? Why, why, why I'm hoping my car gets me to D.C. I'm, you know, I've got to get on this bus. I got to go to New York. I got to, no, they canceled this show because of whatever. You know, but you have not quit. Like well, yeah, it's rolling. I also think that it's important that once you find like what you don't want to quit at, it's easier to just not stop. You know, it's like once I found that music was kind of what I wanted to do, it took a little bit. But like, you know, it's just something that I put my full mind towards. And the biggest deterrent for it is honestly like the amount of money and or like effort that I've had to put in from like a, I. You have to show up at work at five, six in the morning because you got to record a podcast at 10, but you need to do music content and you need to do a bunch of marketing stuff beforehand. Um, There were a lot of days in which I could have just quit that or the fact that I have to spend thousands of dollars to even make the music, which nobody sees. They just see you making music. Um, Not quitting just got easier when I realized that I don't think I have the attention span to do anything else. (laughs) But no, but that's cool. That self-realization, though, is good. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's interesting to me though. And I think that you would agree. I know way more people that quit on everything. They say they care about the most than I do know people that stick with it and don't quit. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. I also think that's because people are willing to say like, yes, I care about this, but I'm willing to care about this other thing just as much if this one thing doesn't work out. So they're kind of giving themselves like we've talked about before. Like if you give yourself a plan B, like you're always Mm -hmm. going to look at that as an out. So like I went to the ultimate, what most people consider plan A, like the University of Virginia, get a degree, get a job. And it's like I dropped out and did music. Yeah. Continue to do music because I don't necessarily like, yeah, a job will always be there, but I don't necessarily have a plan B and it makes it easier to not quit because I just put all my energy towards plan A. Yeah, the thing that's crazy, too, is, though, to the point you just made, you know at any time you can go get a job. Go get a job. You're intelligent, educated, right? Like, you know people. You can go get a job. Yeah, my parents tell me that every morning. You know you can get a job. You're like, I got a job. Have you heard of the Big Dog Podcast? Exactly. And I'm I'm, I'm making music. I do things. We're doing stuff. But to get to... The good stuff, it's like I do stuff, right? But to get to the good stuff, you can't quit. And everybody I know that is uber successful, 
by their definition. All right. Not by mine, not by their moms, not by anybody else's, but by their definition are crazy successful. The one commonality is they haven't quit. They just didn't quit. They've all struggled. They've all been beat up. They've all been broke. They've all had big wins. They've all had astronomical losses and hits, but they never, ever quit. And like, if you just keep yourself in the game, you become impossible to beat. You really do, because here's the thing. Everybody else is going to quit. Everybody else is going to quit. Like, yesterday I was I was talking, I, I posted something about Devin Ray. It was uh, 27 years we've been dating. And, you know, I was just some bull-cut kid, bull-cut haircut <laughs> kid. It was terrible. Start, literally, like, it looked like the tip of a penis, like my head. I mean, that junk was terrible. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, I think about back then being so nervous and like just insecure and intimidated, you know, by her and you almost know, like, well, you know, we asked this girl out, see what's happened. There was, I had no clue where things would lead and where we would be. And, you know, I posted some things and people were messaging me or texting me and they're like, man, it's so awesome. Like. I wish my relationship was like this, or I wish I had, you know, and I was like, look, this junk has been jacked up. And we've talked about it on this show before, you know, it, it, th there are lots of bad times. There are lots of struggles. There are lots of disagreements. We just won't quit on each other. And so the odds of success increase so much more because we know fundamentally she's not going to quit on me. I'm not going to quit on her. Now, that doesn't mean we need to be rolling around failing morally to towards each other, you know, emotionally and, and treating each other poorly and things like that. You know, we need to put our best effort into our relationship, but it doesn't mean that it's perfect all the time. It doesn't mean it's without challenges and, and, and hurt, but there's just no quit in it with this business that we run. Never could have imagined where we are today. And today's a difficult damn day. This is a difficult season right now in our business. There's no quit. I'm not going to quit. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing, though, is you truly love Devin. You truly love the business. I truly love music. And to your point where you say, like, you know what, plenty of people who have quit on things that they say that they love, I would push back, and it might sound callous, but I would ask how much do they really love those things? Because every time I even think about maybe slowing down or stopping with the music, I think to myself, how disrespectful is it to your love of music or to your love of blank to just quit and or give up that easy? And on the flip side, how disrespectful is it for you to think even in the first place that it would be that easy to make it work? Right. Right. Like, why is anything great? Why should anything great be easy? Why should doesn't mean it has to be difficult, right? Like super difficult, but doesn't mean it should be easy. I was having a conversation with the team the other day and I was like, guys, there's some challenges that we're working through and dealing with. And I said, guys, here's the thing. I don't expect days to be without challenges. Like that's fine. We run a massive organization. There are going to be problems. It should not, however, be as difficult as it is right now. Like something's wrong. Something's off. We got to figure out what's wonky in the system because like I almost want to call it like there's a, there's a virus on the machine. You know what I mean? And we can't figure out why it's making certain aspects run slow or act silly. Um, and we got to figure that out. We got to run diagnostics. We got to figure out what's going on because while it should be tough it should not be this difficult at this point right and so that's where i'm trying to push people to hey we need to be you know diagnosing what we're doing we need to be looking at the decisions we're making we need to be looking at how we're communicating because either something's really broken or or we're just making it more difficult than it needs to be 
maybe certain policies, maybe certain hires, maybe certain decisions that we thought would make us better actually don't fit the mold at all, right? And so I think a lot of times people will run into challenges, try to make adjustments. It will continue to be challenging or it will be more challenging. And then people are just like, I don't know what to do. So we what? We quit. There's some crazy statistics out there. Like, I don't know, it's probably over 80% of small businesses don't make it past the first year. I think it's 90 plus percent of businesses. Um, can you Google that? Check that for me. My guess would be 90 plus per percent of startups don't make it past year five. Um, I believe that number could exponentially decrease if people just didn't freak out and quit. And it doesn't mean they shouldn't freak out. Like, be freaked out. Be scared. Be stressed. Be nervous. But don't quit. You've been married for nine months. You've been dating for 18 months. You've been married for nine. You got married nine months after, you know, nine months after you started dating. Oh, man, this is tough. I didn't know they had this type of personality. I didn't know they had this type of behavior. We we've we moved in together right after we got married. I didn't know that they set their toothbrush sideways on the sink rather than like putting the cover on it, standing it up or putting it in the dish or or whatever. Like and this just drives you crazy. Like are you quitting on things over these little simple stupid ass annoyances that really don't do anything cuz divorce rates are bonkers crazy high. And then the funniest part to me about divorce rates is the number of times people have multiple divorces. Like player, you're just not good at that game. Like this, <laughs> we're not keeping score. Yeah. The divorce rate is sitting at a solid 50% right now. <laughs> That's so wild. What's the business one? What's that number? Uh, it was at 21.38% of businesses fail within their first six months to 12 months. Oh, wow. That's way lower than I thought. That's probably over the last two years when the government was giving out all that money. Most likely. So I'd be curious. On it, that's actually not a bad thing to look up because, I mean, they bankrolled a lot of businesses. I'd be curious of those dates. I'm going to look that up, and maybe we'll put that in the notes you know, for people to reference. The bottom line is, though, if you don't quit, you will probably succeed and win, especially in business because most people are going to quit. That's just the reality of it. Most people are going to quit when it gets hard. Everybody has a grand idea. Everybody is passionate for the good stuff. You got to be passionate for the shit, though. You got to be passionate for the, the, the mud you're going to muck through day in and day out. And that's your relationships also. That's not just your business. That's your personal stuff. That's your health. You know, I've, we've talked about this several times. I'm not passionate. I don't want to do it this morning. I'm freaking tired as can be. Still got up out of the bed, got in here, pressed on time. I'm in here nasty, but it, I still got it done. Yeah. And I think the big thing for me is the one thing I would say that I took from UVA would be Thomas Jefferson's quote of you're never done learning. And I don't think you necessarily have to fall in love with the bad moments or the bad things that come, but you should 100% fall in love with learning how to get out of them. Yeah, the process. Exactly. The process. I saw something yesterday, maybe it was this morning, and um, I was on the on the tread and I was listening, and it was like, lions love to hunt, right? Like, if you watch lions, you know, you'll see, like, they're laying around, chilling, lazy, whatever. They're methodical. They're strategic. And when you watch these jokers hunt, like it is wild. Like it is the coolest thing. I, and they're talking about how it's like, I bet the lion loves the hunt as much as it loves the prize. I was like, yeah. I mean, if I was a lion, I'd love that shit too. Come up, jump on the back of some freaking wildebeest. You roll up with the crew trying to take an elephant down or something gangster like that. I mean, like that's fun. 
Right. No, I thought they were pushing each other off of cliffs, or was I watching the wrong documentary? Uh, wrong, wrong documentary. That's Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're making. I have PTSD from that movie as a kid. I don't. It made me so sad. Yeah, Lion I, King. I'll share with you all of the Disney conspiracy theories after the episode. Oh, all right, that's good. So you know, but it's like they love the hunt as much as they do the prize, the kill, and it. I was thinking about that while I'm on this treadmill. I was like, do I love going down this treadmill as much as I'm going to love being healthier? Um, I don't, I don't know that that's factual, but why I'm being consistent and I'm doing these things though, is I have to find some variation of it that I do enjoy that is motivating because if I hate it and I hate the process I'm going through, I'll never get to that end result, right? So I have to find some variation. Mark, the coach who puts together the programming, you know, for my weightlifting and stuff like that. You know, every once in a while, I have to swap and substitute out a movement. Maybe I don't have the the right equipment for it. Um, Or I just know I hate that particular move for, for whatever reason. Not that I can't do it. I just don't enjoy it. So probably once every other week, I will swap out a routine and a movement to something else that does do the same thing, but it fits the equipment I have, or it's something I know that I enjoy. And most of the time I enjoy it, but doesn't mean I'm necessarily good at it. Right. Cause people skip that too. And it's like, my legs look like tree trunks. I mean, they're freaking cut up and they've always been that way. Waist up though. I look like the freaking Michelin man. And so I need to be working on, you know, that area because I would need to improve that area. That's just that's where it's at. But it doesn't mean I can't, just because I substitute something else, doesn't mean I'm necessarily better at it. Just enjoy it. And it'll make sure I'm consistent. Because if I don't quit, if I'm consistent, I will see these results. You know, I look at myself every day. And I'm like, okay, I worked out really hard today. I ate right today. I do not see a damn difference. I don't see a difference. Last week, I'm leaving the studio, and you're like, dang, Josh, profile, I could tell you've been you know, dropping weight. Man, that made my entire week because I don't see it. I don't see it. But I know if I just stay consistent and I don't quit, I'm going to get where I'm trying to be, right? Because I've always quit on this in the past, and I know exactly where it's gotten me. So even if you're not seeing it, you got to be consistent. Even if you're not seeing the improvements in your relationship, in your marriage that you were looking to see after two days of putting your shoes away, because that's something your significant other happens to be bothered by, like, don't just stop doing it because they didn't say thank you. Like, just keep showing up. Keep, keep being present. Don't quit. If you're trying to get weight off, You know, and you've been going to the gym for two weeks and you've only lost a pound, don't quit. Your body's trying to figure out what the hell to do. And I'm no health expert. I'm just in this process. But just don't quit. It takes consistency. All the people you see in the magazines that you wish you looked like are on Instagram as you're scrolling and dudes freaking abs looking like they're freaking chiseled out of a slab of marble. You know how homeboy got those? He didn't quit. Now, he may not have started where you're starting at, but it doesn't matter. They still had to do work, and they didn't quit. If you just refuse to quit, you won't lose. You won't lose in the long term. Doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days, but you'll get where you're trying to go because everybody else will quit. Everybody else will stop because that's what everybody does. So if you're listening today, choose, make the commitment to just don't quit. You don't got to solve all the other world's problems. Just focus and make a commitment to yourself. I will not quit. Whether it's problems in your marriage, whether it's problems in another relationship, whether it's problems at work, whether it's problems within your business, whether it's problems with friends, whether it's a strain in relationship with your kids, 
anything. Make the commitment. I'm just not going to quit. I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep doing the work. And if you do that, you can't lose. You cannot lose. Don't quit. Refuse to quit. And you win. That's it. We appreciate you guys. We'll come in next week. Looking forward to April again. I'll remind you in April we'll be running the live streams. Start on Tuesdays midday um, with the audio experience dropping on Thursdays. And we'll continue to to promote that and talk about it. And you'll see it on different formats. Um, let us know what you think about the show. You know, if you found any of it helpful, you know, please, you know, leave a review on, you know, Apple or Spotify or whatever platform is you listen to. Um, share the show, comment, you know, whatever it may be. All those things help us get found and hopefully impact more people. You know, every day our goal is to make sure there's at least one person that benefits from something that we say, talk about a story. That's why we share a lot of stories on here, guys. Like, there, there's no unique problems, all right? There's just how you respond to them. And so we like to talk about problems, we like to talk about challenges on here and things people have been through and things people are dealing with because someone else is going through something very similar. All right, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll catch you next week.